<sighs> bye bye time. <laughs> bye bye Japan. Will we make it? Last full day in Japan and we are definitely making the best of it. We had a busy morning, which you guys will see in a, in a different video. I don't wanna spoil it, I don't wanna spoil it. You guys will see it, it's awesome. We, w we went back to Hokone this morning to film a really awesome little video, but we're continuing our daily vlog uh, with my last day in Japan, unfortunately. Last day with the 34, and I actually hopped from the plane to America tomorrow. I'm listening to all of you guys, and we're going somewhere very, very special to try and make some dreams come true. I hope. We're gonna try. We're gonna do our best. You guys will see what I'm talking about in just a second. I am almost on empty. Hopefully, hopefully we can make it to our location before I run out of gas. We are fully clenched. That thing, that thing is as low as it's gonna go. There's no way that thing goes any lower. My previous video, I think it's time we actually try and save this NSX. We're actually gonna do it. I wanted to make an update for you guys on the NSX. So previously on my travels to Japan, we stumbled across this NSXR just, just sitting dormant in the middle of Tokyo. While still respecting the car and respecting whoever the previous owner is, I wanna do everything that I can to save this car and try and get it to see the light of day again. From what we can gather, it's been about five plus years since this car has moved, and I wanna try and change that. I am truly, seriously gonna try and save this car. We're gonna leave a note on the car currently, go to the DMV with all the information that we have on the car and, and try and find the owner. So there's a lot of comments and uh, messages that I got about this car asking, did I make an offer on the car? Did I ask the owner if I could buy it? But this car has been here for seven plus years. There could not even, like, there might not even be an owner for this car. It's just been here for so long. There's just no telling who the owner is, if he's even still alive, what the deal is with this car. There's no information whatsoever. And so our plan today is to try and find out some information. And I'm going to leave a note on it. Probably not ever going to be seen. Um, but I'm gonna try anyways. There's always a, always a chance to leave a note and see if or the owner might come walk by maybe and see the note. I don't know. There's always a chance. You never know unless you try. So we're gonna try. We're gonna leave a note on the car today and see if that works. But we're gonna gather all the information that we can off of this car and go to the DMV here in Japan. Oh. Yeah, so there's, there's no telling if the owner will even see the note, but it's worth Worth a shot, it's worth the DMV and trying and seeing if we can get any information at all, which would be cool, but I'm going to do my best guys to try and save this car. If it's possible, buy it and revive it. Just restore it back to, to life, maybe bring it to Spoon, do a couple of things here and there, but I wanna get, get my hopes up. But first, we're gonna try and leave a note and see if we can figure out who the owner is. Step one of our day today is to leave a note. This basically says, hello, we would like to inquire about buying your car or information of your car. That's basically what we're going to be saying. We're going to leave email and phone number. And we're just going to stick it right on the windshield. So hopefully this gets picked up. I have no idea um, we're taking a chance. But like I said, you never know until you try. So this is what is going to happen. We're taking a chance, Masa. Who knows? This could be the craziest story of all time, or we could just never hear back. Mm -hmm. If we can score it, it will be in the, with the history. It will be in, yeah, serious. It will be seriously probably the coolest thing of all time. So we're gonna try. We got the information that we need. We are gonna head to the DMV and let's see if they can give us any info. And if not, that kind of sucks, but we're gonna try. There's a lot of cars like this in Japan. Abandoned, forgotten about. But this one holds a special place with me. With this car, you can really see the respect that the Japanese have for one another, other people's properties, and their cars. Like I said, this car has been here for five plus years, maybe more. And this car has been untouched, left alone, and maybe forgotten about. But that's what makes it so special. The respect will live on with this car. It deserves a second chance and for its story to be told. All right, we have made it to the hit Japanese DMV. It looks just as terrible as the American DMV. Not as packed though. Like I said, we're gonna do our best. We have very, very limited information on the car, so there's no telling if they'll want to give us any info on the previous owner, but Tiana told me I was an idiot if I didn't try and save this car, and I agree with her. She wants an NSX build, I want an NSX build, um, so we gotta try. We're gonna go inside now. I can't bring the camera in, but I will update you guys once we're out. Well, 
Guys, we have some not so great news. And as of right now, it is unfortunately a no-go. And basically they said, without the VIN and an actual like valid excuse or valid reason to find the owner or, or get the previous owner's information, they can't just release information without, without you having knowledge of the actual VIN number and a reason from the previous owner to get their information. It's understandable, but also my hard-headedness and my stubbornness I just never can take no for an answer. Um, so it kind of sucks. But as of right now, we have no luck, unfortunately. And possibly, who knows, if the stars align and the owner or somebody that knows the owner sees that note on the car, miraculously contacts us, that would be amazing. But for now, at this point in time, I think the uh, the abandoned NSX story is gonna, gonna come to a close for now. But who knows, who knows what can happen in the future. It's extremely hot in Japan Dude, right now. Tatsumi is even winter is super cold. It's like August 1st. I think it is August, August 1st. It is August 1st, yes. No, wait. Second. Yeah, Shit. it's second. And it's 97 degrees outside right now with like 100% humidity. Continuing our day, we stopped at my favorite PA in all of Tokyo, which is unfortunately now closed at nighttime. It usually closes around 7 p.m. But this is Tatsumi PA. I've showed it to you guys a few times, but this literally has the sickest view of all time at nighttime because all of these apartments are lit up. You get like the Tokyo landscape with your cars right here. There used to not be this big sound barrier, but because of all the cars, that would come in, in and out of here at nighttime. They put up this massive wall for a sound barrier to block the sound for the apartments over there. So the view is kind of obstructed now and it's not even, it's not even open anymore, which is super lame, but I like to come here every time I come anyways and we're just chilling because I don't have my Airbnb anymore. We're staying in a hotel tonight because I gotta drop this car off early in the morning to make my flight. Um, and we're waiting for Abo to get off of work so that we can all meet at Daikoku and go get one last dinner before I head home. Also, how bad does it suck that this place is closed? Oh, a night? Oh, yeah, 100%. This was the coolest PA. This is the cool. Well, aside from Daikoku, uh, Tokyo area, this is the coolest PA. Yeah, so we're going to hang out here for just a bit, and we'll take you guys along for a little Daikoku night. And one of my favorite meals here, it's like the best Japanese cheeseburger I've ever had in my whole life. I mean, Literally, the, the restaurant seats like five people, and it's incredible. Oh, take us the burger spot? Yeah. The best, uh, dude. Well, this I is the best Japanese burgers that I ever had. In I my think life. it's the best burger I've ever had. But yeah, and it's in a, it's not in Japan, America, and it's in here. Yeah. But uh, for now, let's just enjoy the last day here in Japan. Good Western food. My last night in Tokyo, this is the best. We all get together, have dinner, go for drives. It's gonna be a good night, so. I think we're gonna do the double cheeseburger. Oh yeah. Going for a double cheeseburger. Okay. Uh, slap it on. Let's get a burger view here. Oh, it's hot. Oh, look at the juice. Oh my God. This is easily like, if not the best burger, definitely top three burgers I've ever had in my life. First this bite. This is good like lunch. I didn't even know it's good for lunch. But this is good for lunch. The juice, the bun, sauce. Come on. Yeah, nice I've been to meet you. to meet you because I've been watching your video. I've been watching your channel for quite a while. Dude, thank you, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you for watching, bro. Thank you. So Bye. cool. That's so cool to think about. You guys view my videos all over the world. Yes, I make videos in Japan, but being from America, it's so crazy to me that people in other countries are watching these videos. So shout out to you guys. Thank you for watching. I couldn't do any of this without you. Like I said, just finished dinner. We're actually gonna be heading to Daikoku for our final night here in Tokyo and doing some night runs or night drives as well. It's gonna be a good little night. So thought I'd take you guys along for our final night in Tokyo.
surprising amount of cars here for a random Tuesday night. <laughs> hey guys, so in this episode of the Elbow Show, I'm holding Dustin's camera. So yes. I'm gonna use his camera to film some shots of the GTR, and then he's gonna use my camera to film some shots of the yes. Evil Wagon. Switch it up a little bit for tonight. Yeah. All right, this is gonna power us through the rest of the night. Some uh, Kumbini Cafe Ole, Cafe Latte Expressos. Let's ready? go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, guys, I figured something out. The reason why Dutt is so jacked is because his camera rig is so heavy. It's probably at least 1.5 times heavier than mine. If you want to get ripped, want to get jacked while doing YouTube, get a Canon. All right, let's go. What an amazing trip, guys. Really quickly before we head back to the hotel, I just want to say thank you. Without all of you guys watching the videos, supporting, liking, commenting, uh, this would not be a reality for me. Um, you know, I look back and when I started my YouTube channel when I was like, you know, 15 or 16, 15 year old me would die if he knew where I was at right now. You know, this was not even in a dream in my mind back then that this is a possibility. I want to say thank you guys for giving me this amazing platform to create what I love for you guys and just make content that you all enjoy and that I hope you can see how passionate and how much I love this aside from just the cars but the tradition, the cultures, the friends that I've made in a completely opposite side of the entire world. Um, I just, I love making videos for you guys and sharing these experiences and what I'm learning and all of this and I'm glad you guys are enjoying it so thank you because without all of you watching I would not be here right now but like I said that was our final drive of the entire trip we are about to head to the hotel and I get up in the morning drop the 34 off and head to the hotel <sighs> bittersweet moment I miss Tiana and Sparko but then again I could stay here forever with my friends and cars and it's amazing. Tiana has to come with me again now that we're more kind of established in Japan. Um, I think she'd have a great time coming with me again. But... Good night, boys. Good night. See you, man. Yep. Bye. You see? What are the chances they actually let me on the plane with this thing? <laughs> uh, if you don't remember, this is the rear diffuser from Car Shop Glow that we got for the R32. You know, worst case scenario, if they tell me no, then we just have to ship it, but it's worth a shot, right?
one last look, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. That's good. Let's see, okay. Oh, it's so hot. What I like to do is I set the trip meter to see how many miles or how many kilometers we drive each time I come to Japan. And this time we drove 20, almost 2,900 kilometers. 2,900 kilometers in three weeks. That just shows how much fun we get to have in all the different places. Uh, we get to go. I'll keep track of how much we actually drive when we come here. Last time it was over 3,000 kilometers, which is insane. I had to change my shirt because it is so hot today, Masa. I know. Here you go. This is it. Final goodbye to the GTR. See you again in October. Massive thank you to Top Rank for allowing me to do this and letting me store the car here, drive it, and setting up all that. It's amazing. Thank you to Top Rank. I'm gonna leave all the info to Top Rank down in the description box below in case you guys wanna do something similar like me and get a car stored out here, drive it and stuff. They can help you out. That'll leave the info down below. It's where I buy all my JDM cars from. So we got the box loaded up. The GTR is dropped off. Now it's time to go to the airport and see if we can actually even ship this freaking thing. Boss, you will literally be back in like two months, right? <laughs> Big rip, it's too big for the plane. Mm -hmm. I kind of knew it. Yeah, dang it. Thought we could get by, but too big. So now we got to ship it, which kind of sucks, but is what it is. Masa, thanks for helping. Thanks for everything all week. Good to see you. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah, a couple months. A couple months. All right, Masa. Safe trips. Bye bye. Plane. Time to go back home.